three months to be exact. Yeah, it's been a crazy three months. Actually, the last four years has been pretty crazy for me. And I should have had this segment uploaded three and a half weeks ago. It's been crazy. Hopefully, uh, 2017 will be a little better for me. I know a lot of you out there might not think so. I know in the last month and a half, there's been a lot of doom and gloom. I've watched a few videos on YouTube and various other sites of SJWs melting down over the election of Donald Trump. And I will explain to you why you really can't blame me for voting for Mickey Mouse. Actually, I voted Libertarian, but that's the equivalent of voting for Mickey Mouse. Now, really, this should have been the Libertarian's year. If only they had gotten their act together. They really need to get their act together. Or at the least, read up on foreign policy. At least then you'll have a bit of a clue of what Olipo is. As well, name a foreign leader that's not only still alive, but still active in office. I mean, really, if Perez hadn't died that week, Gary Johnson wouldn't have had a name to even give to Chris Matthews. And now, until the Libertarians get their act together, they are nothing more than a protest vote. But getting back to not really blaming me because I voted Libertarian, because I know there are a lot of people out there who will blame me, like the aforementioned Chris Matthews. Chris Matthews is a diehard two-party guy, he doesn't like third parties. I do. But he would tell me, no, I do blame you. And I would tell him right back, well, I blame the Democrats for not presenting a viable candidate that's worthy of my vote. Now, really, you tried to shove Hillary down everybody's throats the same way Vince McMahon and the WWE tried to shove Roman Reigns down everybody's throat. But at least with Roman Reigns, he didn't have the baggage that Hillary Clinton has. I mean, really, you were so obsessed with making Hillary Clinton the first woman president that you didn't see the signs. You didn't see it with Bernie. You didn't see it with Donald Trump. People were tired of the same old song and dance, tired of the establishment, tired of the elitists. They were tired of not being heard. They wanted somebody who would hear their voice, somebody who would go into Washington and drain the swamp. They didn't care about the corruption with Donald Trump. I mean, yeah, he had his slush fund, and Hillary Clinton had her slush fund. That was all pot kettle black. You know what else was also all pot kettle black? The groping. Little bus ride with Donald Trump and the hot mic. The walk down memory lane with Bill Clinton and all the women that he molested. And Monica and the dress and the cigar. Donald Trump reminded us all of that, and he did it in grand fashion. The man is a modern-day P.T. Barnum. And just like P.T. Barnum, we all thought of him as nothing more than a sideshow. Nobody expected him to get past the primaries and get the nomination, but he did. He pulled it off. And when he did lock it up, there were a few people out there who did take pause and fire out some warning volleys that this guy just might pull it off. But nobody listened. People were disregarding a lot of things, including what was going on over in Britain there, with the Brexit. We're seeing this all over Europe, all over the world. People are pushing back on this open borders and multiculturalism. They want to take back control of their borders. Who goes in, who goes out, who stays, who leaves? They're tired of these mandates and immigration quotas handed down by the EU. And I guess it goes without saying that Michael Moore and the rest of the mainstream media is lying through their teeth. At least the liberal end of the mainstream media is lying through their teeth about uh, British people having regrets for voting for exiting the European Union. They are not regretting the vote. They're just pissed off at politicians dragging their feet in the exiting process. Yes, we all know how the mainstream media manipulates the facts to conform to their way of thinking, to get you to think the way they want you to think, to benefit their candidates. And sometimes that manipulation blows up in their faces. 
And in this case, ladies and gentlemen, we're talking of biblical proportions. Nah, really, I sat here for a whole year watching you mainstream media clowns crunching numbers and covering this election like a Super Bowl pregame show. Every day, every hour, all I heard was, oh, the numbers just aren't there. Trump just doesn't have a chance. He's got such a narrow path to the White House. I mean, really, if you look at these key battleground states in which Trump must win, you carve them up district by district, and you see that Hillary edges out Donald Trump in just about every district except the few down here where Trump edges out Hillary. But bear in mind that these districts went with Romney back in the day. As well, we knew this race down the home stretch would tighten, which is why in a few nationwide polls, Donald Trump is head by a couple of percentage points. But that's within the margin of error. As well, these polls that we're looking at here have fluctuated from time to time and really aren't very scientific. Whereas the polls over here, where Hillary is leading by eight points, they've been pretty stable and are scientific polls. So as you can see, all in all, the numbers just aren't there for Donald Trump. And all along, you had an ass backwards. It was Hillary who had the narrow path. And you knew it. Nah, really, you did. You had people come on your news shows and your talk shows telling you that Donald Trump was going to win. And you didn't take them seriously. In some cases, you laughed them right off the show. Now, to say you've got egg on your face is an understatement. You clowns are drenched in chicken embryo. And don't even go there with me with Comey. And that last-minute letter about new emails being found. Please, that's not what costed the election. We're talking about a number of things just piled up onto each other. And then we've got the management of her campaign. Again, mismanaged, just like last time. No, really. I mean, she pulls out of key states that she thought she had locked up. And everybody asked, why are you doing this? And they concentrated on Western states, Western states that are usually irrelevant. And they pulled out of Georgia, they pulled out of Florida, and Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania was the funny one, ladies and gentlemen. I, I saw this segment on MSNBC with Chris Matthews where he was sitting in a town hall meeting and he was sitting there saying, this was how it was done in the old days. This is how the machine works in Pennsylvania. This is how we are going to shore up Pennsylvania for Hillary. This is fascinating stuff. This is good stuff. Yeah, bullshit, Chris. You lost Pennsylvania. That's the thing that cracks me up about Hillary Clinton supporters. They brag about her 30 years experience in public service and how qualified she is to be president. Yet she screws up two campaigns. First one, she loses to Obama, and she almost fell on her face with Bernie. And in the end, she loses to Donald Trump. So much for experience. Bye-bye, Hillary. I don't know if it would be premature to say bye-bye social justice, but the election of Trump sure has put a wrench in the social justice machinery. And of course, the machine is steam-powered, let us be conscious of the environment, people. As well, the wrench is made of recyclable material. And it's safe to say that this is a major setback for feminism. No, really. I mean, Hillary Clinton, your gal, your goddess, was outperformed by the owner of a beauty pageant. And, of course, as always, the KKK has endorsed the Republican candidate for president. And the Republican candidate for president, as always, rejects their endorsement in his own special way. Donald Trump is the proverbial bull in the China closet. There is nothing subtle about Donald Trump. Not that it would matter. I mean, really, even if Donald Trump was articulate, or at the least a little more careful in using his words or choosing words, they would still quote mine him, take him out of context put words in his mouth. It's just the way it is. Both sides do it. It's politics. But if you want to talk about racism, let's talk about Black Lives Matter. There is a racist element in Black Lives Matter. You want to talk about white supremacy? Let's talk about Black Lives Matter. 
there is a black supremacist element within Black Lives Matter. Not to mention all the idiotic demands put forth by Black Lives Matter, which Hillary Clinton had signed on to, such as giving black communities the power to hire and fire police officers. Not to mention the ending of the criminalization, incarceration, and killing of black people. Well, that one's easy. Just stop committing crime. Stop blaming white people for all your problems. Go out and get yourself an actual job, an honest job, and get an honest day's pay and be a productive member of society. That one's easy. But Hillary Clinton signed on to all this crap. She was so desperate to get the endorsement from Black Lives Matter, not realizing not all black people were for Black Lives Matter. Same thing with Hispanics. They got all excited when they saw this large number of Hispanics registering to vote. I live out here in California. There's a lot of Hispanics that agree with Donald Trump. They know something has to be done with the border and with illegal immigrants. That's what Donald Trump was talking about, illegal immigrants. And need I remind you that I voted libertarian? I'm just trying to be fair here. I did the same thing with Obama, in all fairness. Personally, I would have liked to have seen John Casey get the nomination. He's one of the few Republicans, and what I mean by few is that I can count them on my fingers and still have a few fingers left over. One of the few Republicans I would consider voting for. The problem, other than Kasich being boring and having no charisma, but the real problem was both asylums have been taken over by the inmates. And as a result, the American people have been presented with the two worst candidates in the history of American politics. And now they're out there protesting, marching in the streets, in between classes. Ah, these millennials. And they're protesting the election of Donald Trump. Which is fine. They have the right to protest, to peacefully protest. Some of them are getting a little crazy out there. I know a lot of you out there protesting actually think that you can change the results of this election by protesting. A lot of you think that you can get delegates relegated to Trump to flip to Hillary in the final count. That one didn't go too well. Yeah, and so what? She won the popular vote. She still lost the election. I know, second time in 16 years. Happened to Al Gore last. And it's happened before that, too. I mean, the law of the land is the Constitution, and the Electoral College is in the Constitution. That's how it's done. I mean, you know the routine. You don't like the Electoral College, you have to change the Constitution. So the only way that you can change it is by a constitutional convention. And the Republicans are talking about a constitutional convention. In a few weeks, they are going to rule the roost. And they are talking about a constitutional convention, but not to change the Electoral College. And they're not going to change something that has been benefiting them. What they're talking about in the constitutional convention is to put in a balanced budget amendment. So the next best thing is to get some kind of nationwide legislation going. And that's what they've been trying to do for what? Since Al Gore lost the election but still won the popular vote. But even if tomorrow morning the planets all fell into alignment and they managed to get this thing passed and basically nullify the Electoral College, it's still not going to change the results of this election. Donald Trump is going to be the 45th president. Now, whether you want to declare him your president or not is absolutely irrelevant. Donald Trump is going to be the 45th president. And it's going to be a hell of a ride. I've got my four-year supply of popcorn. I've bought some Jack Daniels. I live out here in California, and uh, we're one of the states that voted to legalize pot. But anyway, Donald Trump is going to be our next president, and you have nobody to blame but yourselves. Because you put forth this weak candidate with all these dark clouds hanging over her head, 
from Benghazi to emails to FBI probes, and let's not forget all those blasts in the past, including those antics with her husband. And you knew all these things would be in the forefront, and she'd be fighting these things off with her campaign. You were well warned by people that all those things would weaken her chances of winning, but you ignored those warnings and put her out there anyway, all for the sake of having a woman in the White House. And you would have been better served putting up the likes of Elizabeth Warren without all the baggage. And this really has nothing to do with agenda. No, really, I am sick and tired of hearing this argument that America is just not ready for a woman president. That's bullshit. I and many of my fellow Americans are more than ready for a woman president. Hillary was just the wrong woman. And as a result, we've got Donald Trump, the next president of the United States. And like I said, the next four years is going to be one hell of a ride. And then again, he could be impeached within eight months. I hope that doesn't happen. Then I'd be stuck with all this popcorn. But really, if you put up the right candidate, you wouldn't have to worry about the Electoral College. Really, I'm going to put a spin on this whole Electoral College controversy that you haven't heard before. And it's not all that far from the truth either, ladies and gentlemen. The Electoral College, for all intents and purposes, is a tool to keep human stupidity in check. It works the majority of the time. You can't really count this election because you had two bad candidates. Usually it boils down to a case of the lesser of two evils. This was more a matter of dumb and dumber. And speaking of human stupidity, I'm sure there are a few radical feminists or third-wave feminists who are flipping their lids on my statement about Hillary Clinton being the wrong woman. Right now you're calling me a sexist and a misogynist. Well, if you want a woman president, you wouldn't put up the right man for the job, would you? No, you would put up the right woman. You thought Hillary Clinton was the right woman, but she turned out to be the wrong woman. Does that make sense? Oh, no, wait a minute. Oh, that was a silly question. Asking a third-wave radical feminist if that makes sense. <laughs> I got caught up in the moment. <laughs> and I guess... Before I dated myself when I called marijuana pot. Does anybody call it pot anymore? Does anybody call it marijuana anymore? Is it just cannabis now? Whatever you call it, it's legal now in California. Or at least to have under an ounce. It's legal. <laughs> I have a neighbor who's clearing out a space in his uh, backyard. He plans on growing some plants. I told him I'd check in on the law before you do that, guy, really. Because the laws for alcohol are going to be the same with marijuana, and more so with marijuana. You know that guy as well as I do. I mean, really. We didn't legalize this for the love of cannabis. No, we're trying to make money on it. Whether it be for licensing fees or just fining people for their own stupidity of the law. I mean, really, guy, I'm not 100% sure of this. But I would not bet the farm on going down to Home Depot and finding pot seeds next to the corn and pumpkin seeds anytime soon. Yes, sir. Welcome to Home Depot. Can I help you? Oh, pot seeds? Yes, that would be aisle 12, right next to the alcohol stills. I mean, if you were growing it for yourself, that's one thing. But I see dollar signs in your eyes, guy. I mean, let's face it, not everybody in the state of California is happy that this proposition has passed. I'm sure there's a few out there that would like a recount on it. And speaking of recount, how's that for a pivot? Didn't see that one coming. From marijuana to Jill Stein and her recount, with Hillary Clinton backing her. Yes, Hillary Clinton, the very woman for months, showed such concern about Trump conceding and the importance of a peaceful transition of power. Now she's backing Jill Stein for a recount. So much for a peaceful transition of power. And it's a bullshit recount, ladies and gentlemen. 
The states that she's doing the recount on, they have laws where she can take the money in which she's getting for this recount and stuff some of it into the coffers of her party, the Green Party, a.k.a. Communist Party. You're just a bunch of communists. I mean, did you see the way Jill Stein just tinkled all over the body of Fidel Castro? A great leader he was. A fucking communist. Okay, that's one. That's part of my new policy here at Santora's World. I am only allowing myself six F-bombs per show. Most other colorful metaphors that I tend to use have no limits. Except for one which is probably even worse than the F-bomb. And you really have to piss me off real bad in order for me to use that word. And Jill Stein has pissed me off. This woman's a cunt. When the bad outweighs the good by such disproportions. You cannot praise such a man, such an evil person. Yeah, I'm sure Hitler did some good things too. And then there was the Holocaust, which just obliterates any good that he ever did. And when it comes to the bad outweighing the good, well, Hillary Clinton falls into that category as well. I, like many others, hold her accountable for Benghazi. Of course, she doesn't like to accept accountability or responsibility. She likes to pass the buck like with the emails and the private server. Well, Colin Powell said I can do it. And they went to Colin Powell and says, I said, what? Really? And when Hillary realized that the jig was up, she started destroying emails. She knew she was in trouble. She knew a subpoena was coming. I mean, what have they been saying for years about the Clintons? Follow the money. And then came WikiLeaks and we followed the money. And of course, it's all the fault of Russia. I mean, really, how dare they hack into the server of John Podesta? How dare they hack into anybody's server? Oh, really, ladies and gentlemen, this is unprecedented. I mean, how often do we hear of a country hacking into the server of another country? And if Russia was so evil as Hillary Clinton paints them to be, then why, when she was in charge of the Defense Department approve a deal with Uranium One, giving one-fifth control of Uranium production from Uranium One to the Russia. Why would she do that if they're so bad? Really? My goodness, Hillary, Russia can't be that bad. They donated $500,000 to your Clinton Foundation. And then you want to accuse Russia of trying to influence the presidential election here in America? Oh, like we don't do the same thing with other countries? How about we talk about what's going on in the Middle East? I mean, you and Barack Obama and George W. have done a spectacular job destabilizing that entire region. And why? Because you want to install puppet governments which are going to favor America. Just like it did with the Shah of Iran. Remember him? And where you got into trouble with Russia is when you started sticking your nose into Syria. And what's going on there? Assad has got to go. Why? Because he's a brutal dictator? How many brutal dictators out there in the world that you don't give a fuck about? Let's go back in history to the Reagan administration in Central America and Daniel Ortega and Nicaragua. I know I said that wrong, but I don't give a fuck, but we all know what happened there. Just another country where we tried to influence an election and install a government that was in our favor. Don't give me this crap about fostering democracy. Democracy is a matter of convenience for both parties, Democrat and Republican. Just like the Bible, they pick and choose constitutional passages to suit their needs. Fostering democracy, yeah. We did such a great job fostering democracy in Iraq. But for me, my favorite chapter in America's history of fostering democracy around the world, you got to go back to 1954 and the Eisenhower administration, and the CIA, and Guatemala, and United Fruit. This is how we created Fidel Castro. 
back to him. We can't get away from him, even in death. Guatemala had a democratic elected government whose president wanted to give out land grants to peasants. United Fruit didn't like that because they were down there growing bananas. And they wanted more land. And they wanted free range. Not only in Guatemala, but all of Central America. But the democratically elected government of Guatemala didn't like that. And so the president of United Fruit, who was friends with Eisenhower, gave him a call. Next thing you know, the CIA is down there starting up a coup d'etat, which overthrew the democratically elected government and putting in a puppet dictatorship, which killed thousands of its own people and gave United Fruit just what it wanted, free range, as well a 99-year lease on the land, as well tax exemption. So please, Hillary, spare me about Russia hacking into your server and trying to influence the presidential election in this country, please. Because all is fair in love and war and politics, Hillary. And fake news. Yeah, that little deal that I told you about with Russia and Hillary Clinton and Uranium One, the liberal media has declared it fake news. Anything that comes out of WikiLeaks is doctored and fake. This coming from the same people who have been showing you all these fake polls for the last year. The same people who I've talked about before manipulate the truth, manipulate the news. They just take a kernel of truth and wrap it around their rhetorical bullshit and just toss it out there as the gospel truth. I mean, really think about this, ladies and gentlemen. They are making up news stories about fake news. All because they cannot accept the fact that their gal lost. Nor can Hillary Clinton accept the fact that she lost. No, really, Hillary, I hope you got a refund on those fireworks. Either that or you can use them for your retirement party because you're done, Hillary. Now stop blaming the Russians. Stop blaming WikiLeaks and Julia San. Stop blaming Fox News. Stop blaming everybody but yourself for losing. It's all your own doing, Hillary. And it's time to fade away into the darkest, sinister chapters of human history and take Billy Boy with you. And as a wise man once said, Hillary, don't go away mad, just go away.